few minutes I'm going to cut into a video that I made um, earlier this year to explain how you download Python Portable, which is a full, free and genuinely um, free version of Python. However, since I made that video, I've moved more and more to using an online IDE, which is an online development environment. The benefits of using this is that I don't need to find Python on my computer every time. I just go onto this web page. Um, and it, uh, the other good thing is it automatically saves code for me. So I just type it and then it will remember it for me. And also the other good thing is um, that it's it just feels slightly more um, logical. And when you're starting uh, Python, as you'll see from later parts of this video, if you go to it, um, you'll see that it's sometimes not intuitive how you where you actually start your typing. So what you have to do, first of all, is you have to sign up. So this is a website called REPL.IT, R-E-P-L dot I-T, R-E-P-L dot I-T. To sign up, you need a unique username. You need to put in your email and you need to put in your password. For a free account, all your code is visible, but um, we're just doing um, fairly small projects, so nothing commercial or anything like that, so I'm fine with that. I, in fact, have already made an account. Details. Okay. And here we are. Um, I'm fairly lazy about this. Um, what I have is um, we can set up languages that it, we would like to practice, so I've done that. Um, but also, if I do a new one, um, two things you will use quite a lot. One is Python. You will use Python to, to learn standard Python. And then if you want to use a graphic user interface, if you want to start using Windows um, with checkboxes and tick boxes and um, text fields and buttons, then you need the Kinter version, T Kinter, Kinter version. So uh, when I start typing a new program, I choose the version that I'm going to um, be using. I'll start with Python. It comes up every time with a, a kind of innocent but slightly confusing name. I create it. And for me, this is much more usable. Look, I type my code in here. I even can get some samples. I press run and the output appears over here. If I um, used, used a, um, a Kinter one, then I get the, um, the area where I would see the, um, the window with any boxes and check boxes and things on top. So my typing comes in here. I see any messages that come out, any kind of um, language messages or results if I'm asking for print would come out here. And if I have a window, it's here. So just to review, um, this is on REPL.IT, R-E-P-L.IT. You make yourself a free account and it saves the code for you. Now, if you'd like to go further, then carry on with the rest of this video where I will explain how you can make uh, and run Portable Python, which is a free version, um, shareware version um, that you are allowed to use. But if you like this, this is where I would now start. I would start with REPL.IT. So this video is going to be a very quick video to show you how you can get a copy of Python for your own computer. It's a free program. It's a very, very old program. It's um, so therefore it has quite small uh, command set, um, but there are ways around that, which we'll talk about at another time. So it's a very powerful language. Um, so there are three ways to get Python. 
uh, you can get it as Python Portable. That's what this video is going to be all about. Or you can get the full version. Um, or my colleague Andy uh, first running it in Visual Studio Code. I've not done that before, so I'm not used to that. Um, but today I'm going to just focus on Portable Python, the Python Portable. So um, the good thing is you can use the portable version if you don't have admin rights on the computer that you're using and also it means that your program isn't fully installed on your computer. If you're in college you can find it at the K drive which is also called student shared then the computing folder folder and then portable software portable python. Uh, because it is shareware it is free you are allowed to copy it um, so you can just uh, take a copy um, and then um, copy that into your own um, student area or put it onto a memory stick. It doesn't work after it's been zipped, I've found, so don't try and zip it and email it to yourself. Or if you're at home and you want to get it directly with the most recent version, you want to go onto the address there, sourceforge.net slash projects slash portable hyphen python. Uh, that's here. And I did this um, a few minutes ago. And what you get is uh, here, can you see the portable python exe? It's a... It's, um, compressed file it's an executable file so I ran that by double clicking on it and um, in fact I asked it to make a separate folder called portable python so you can do that or you can let it put it in its own folder um, so I did that earlier today made a portable, a portable python folder clicked on ok and what I got was this folder and here you can see this is the whole code so if at any time you want to copy it this is what you can copy and you launch it by going to the IDLE or the idle Okay, so Python has two parts to it, which people get confused about. It has a shell, the outcome from any programs comes here, and you can actually program line by line, but that's not where you want to program code if you're doing a full long program. Doing a long program, you want file, either one you've got already open, or new file. And you can see it, it looks very similar but you can see there are slightly different options and you haven't got these hash, these, these chevrons here. So I'm going to show you one very, very quick program for i in range 5. That's made a thing called a variable. It's called it i and it's going to do this thing while i is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and then it's going to stop. And what's it going to do? Well, it's going to run to the printer. Okay, so it's a, to write out lots of copies of, um, of lines. Uh, so I'm going to I've written my whole program. It could be hundreds of lines, or it could be just a couple. I'm going to choose Run. And this version has Run module up here. The version I have at college, Run module is at the bottom. So Run module. Yes, I have to save it, which is great because it saves it before you run it, just in case the program crashes. That's great. Um, lines. Saved a program called Lines already. Let me just check. Write it. Yep. And there, there we go. It's written five times. I must not talk in class. 
So you really, if you can do that and make that happen, you have a working version of Python. Um, as I say, you can use the full version. There are places where you can get the full version or um, you can use uh, Vis Visual Studio Code. I've not used that before. I like running this, um, but it's what different people like. In my next video, I'll talk you through five or six different programs just to show you some of the things that the program is doing. Thanks very much.